Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In the last couple of videos we used hardware interrupts to monitor the state change of a signal on one of the interrupt pins. On the Arduino Uno, um, interrupt 0 is pin 2 and interrupt 1 is pin 3. So there were a couple of uh, hardware interrupts that we were monitoring and one was just a, you know, a button being pressed and it had pull up resistor so when you uh, closed the button the uh, signal would go from high to low so we were monitor monitoring the the state change the falling edge on this particular case and then we also had a motor and connected to the shaft was like a propeller and that propeller was cutting a beam of light so we had like a transmitter and then a receiver, an LED. Um, and when it cut that beam of light, it would create a square wave. And again, we would monitor a state change. We would specify whether we were looking at the rising edge or the falling edge. And we use that information to calculate the revolutions per minute. So this was a switch. So we would we would use attach interrupt and that has three arguments and the first argument is what interrupt so if we're connected to pin 2 if we're monitoring a signal with pin 2 that's interrupt 0 and the next argument is the function that is going to get called when we see the state change and we have to specify the state change is either rising or falling or high or low uh, so we could say uh, rising so whenever the rising edge of a pulse occurred or a state change from low to high this function would get called so it would, it would interrupt the normal flow of the program go run that function and then come back and start where it left off in both of these cases hardware is being monitored uh, and the hardware causes a state change and the software responds to that state change using this attach interrupt function but we also have the ability to use timer interrupts with the Arduino. So instead of having an interrupt triggered by monitoring external hardware, we can use uh, the timing that's going on on board the Arduino to trigger an interrupt. And that's all based off of a 16 megahertz crystal that's on the Arduino. So now we're going to look at timer interrupts. If you look closely at the Arduino, see if we can zoom in on that, right here there's a 16 megahertz crystal. Let's see if we turn this around, if you can see that. See there it says T16.000. So as soon as you turn on the Arduino, that crystal starts oscillating at 16 megahertz. That's 16 million cycles per second. So you have this crystal, T16000. And as soon as you turn on the Arduino, it starts to oscillate and it's oscillating at 16 megahertz. So all the timing that occurs or is made, of, made use of on the Arduino is based on this crystal. So we've used um, the millisecond function and again that keeps track of this crystal so as soon as you turn on the Arduino 
the millisecond keeps track of the time that's passing so it starts to count and it can count or keep track of up to 50 days with this function and then it resets so it counts up to 50 days when using this millisecond function there's also a microsecond function and it can count up to only uh, 70 minutes before it resets and also the delay that's also uh, based on the crystal so when you set a certain period of time that you want a delay to occur it knows how long to, de de to delay based off of that crystal now on the Atmega microcontroller chip itself there are three timers uh, that are used for keeping track of time or timing and one is timer one and it's a 16-bit register so this has uh, 16 bits and if you have 16 bits you can count 2 to the 16 minus 1 which is 65,535 now that that may seem a lot but when you're counting uh, or cycling at 16 megahertz you run through this pretty quickly uh, you can hardware and also software divide this 16 megahertz so you can slow this down the Arduino software language doesn't officially recognize uh, taking manual control of this timer but there is a third-party library that's been created uh, that allows you to manipulate this 16-bit uh, register and use it for timing uh, and specifically for timer interrupts so this library is called timer one and this library uh, someone has already gone ahead and, and done all the hard work so you just need to install this library into your Arduino IDE and then it allows you to use uh, timer interrupts and use this register so I'll put a link in the description directing you to the timer one file that you need to download and unzip and uh, then copy that folder into your Arduino library folder so you need to install it here you can see timer one so if you have the timer one library installed correctly if you go to files and examples um, at the end here uh, there's a timer one ISR blank sketch and this is just a short sketch that will toggle the surface mount LED on the Arduino uh, that's connected to pin 13 it'll toggle it on and off at 10 Hertz so it will be on five times and off five times uh, in a one second interval so it'll blink at 10 Hertz and this is utilizing a timer interrupt so this surface mount LED right here that's lit that's constantly on that's attached to pin 13 so we can get that to blink by loading that sketch so let me load it see if we can get closer and you can see there now it's blinking so let's see how the sketch controls the toggling of this LED so just like any other library you have to use include to bring in the resources of this timer1.h library now here we have a void setup where we're going to initialize the pin the digital pin as an output so we're going to call uh, pin 13 we're going to define it as an output so pin 13 uh, physically is already connected also to that onboard surface mount LED so using pin mode we declare pin 13 an output so we could also 
physically connect a separate LED uh, with the current limiting resistor to pin 13 uh, to get it to blink also, but we already have this onboard surface mount LED that we can use. And here we use timer one dot initialize to set the length of the timer. And here we have 100,000, that's in microseconds. So 100,000 microseconds uh, or 0.1 seconds is equal to 10 hertz. And this will blink the LED uh, five times on and five times off uh, per second. And here we have the timer one dot attach interrupt and this is the function that gets run uh, on each interrupt and unlike the hardware interrupt where we have three arguments where we have uh, the interrupt that we're using on the on the UNO whether it's zero or one uh, and then we specify the function and then also uh, we specify the uh, state change um, rising or falling or high or low here we just specify the function that gets called at the interval that we set up with this timer one dot initialize. So unlike a hardware interrupt where we have uh, we have to specify the interrupt uh, the pin that we're looking at and uh, what function we want to run and whether we're looking at the rising or falling edge this timer interrupt we just have this function here gets called every 0.1 seconds. So down here we have void timer ISR and this is the uh, this is how we toggle that LED where we're going to write to it uh, the, that LED is attached to pin 13 and this is an interesting way to toggle that LED. If you see here, we've already declared pin 13 as an output, so how can we do a digital read? Well, on the Arduino, on the microcontroller, there are registers that monitor uh, the pins, the I.O. pins on the uh, microcontroller. So when you do a digital read on 13, it looks to see whether that pin is high or low. So this is a bitwise operator. It's actually an XOR operator. So if you recall uh, an OR gate 00011011, an OR gate, we have A, B, is high when either of the inputs is high. So 0111. Well, an exclusive OR uh, gate produces a high output only when both inputs are at opposite uh, each other. So it's 0, 1, 1, 0. So if we exclusive OR the digital read 13 with a 1, it will toggle the state of pin 13. And if we just assume initially that digital read is a 0, if you exclusive or it with a 1, a 0 and a 1 with exclusive OR will produce a 1. So then the next time around it will be exclusive OR with a 1 and a 1 and a 1 and a 1 produces a 0. So it continually toggles the state of pin 13 and thus toggles the state of the LED attached to pin 13. There is another way to toggle an I.O. pin with one line of code and if we use again digital write 13 and we can use an exclamation mark which is a boolean operator instead of a bitwise this is a boolean operator and this is equivalent to not. So if we do an exclamation digital read on 13, what this does is it looks again, a digital read 
uh, on an output pin returns either a high, a zero, or a one. It returns uh, either a low or a high, or a higher or a low, uh, depending on the state uh, of that pin. And this is not. So if this is a zero, and this is not zero, not zero is a one. So a not zero is equal to a one, and a not one is equal to a zero. So that's another way to then toggle uh, 13 or an I.O. pin. So to summarize, we'd ordinarily say digital write uh, 13 high, and this would cause 13 to go high, or we could have a constant name here where we would declare uh, 13 a name and also use pin mode to say it's an output but here we're just saying pin 13 go high and we're using digital write but we can use a digital read and when you use a digital read on an output uh, there are registers uh, that are called ports there's port X there's a port uh, and X is just uh, you can substitute port B, C, and D for port X. And each of these ports is a register that uh, each of the bits in the register directly maps or connects to uh, one of the pins on the output of the Arduino. And in this case, uh, port B, uh, bit position 1, is looking at the status of uh, the output of pin 13. So it keeps track of whether it's high, if it's a zero or a one. And when you, when you use a digital read, it returns a, either a zero or a one uh, when you do a digital read on an output. So that gives us two options here for toggling, where if a digital read, uh, depending on the value that it returns, you can either use this bitwise operator, which is ex XOR and if a zero is returned it will give us uh, a one so a zero will be XORed with the one producing a one and if digital read returns a one it'll be one exclusive OR with one which is a zero and it'll keep on toggling in this case we're using the exclamation mark which is a boolean operation and what this does is it's a not so whatever digital read returns uh, after looking at 13 if it's a zero not zero is a one and if it's a one not one is a zero and so either of these is, is an option to use for uh, using just a one-line statement to toggle an output. So that's how you use a timer interrupt using the third-party uh, Timer1 library installed into your Arduino IDE. I hope you found this video interesting. If you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and or comment, and thanks for watching.